NTV, Good Morning at NTV is the program that is still taking place. And uh, in this segment, we have a special guest. Uh, we usually start at uh, 7.15 for the sports update. But this morning, because of Uganda's performance, uh, terif terrific performance at the Olympics, we have a special guest uh, with whom we are going to dissect Uganda's performance at the Olympics, where we ended up with uh, four gold medals, two golds, one silver, and one bronze. And uh, that makes it Uganda's most successful Olympic um, um, performance, and I'm Elvis Senono as usual. Today I'm host, I'm joined uh, by um, a special guest, an Olympian, that is the Honorable Julius Achon. Most of you know him in the political circles, but uh, actually most of us sometimes don't refer to him as Honorable because we know he carries so many titles from the sporting world. He is the 1994 World Junior Champion. Uh, he got gold in 1994. Um, uh, and he also got bronze at um, the All Africa Games a couple of years later. He joins me this morning as uh, we dissect Uganda's performance at the Olympic Games that concluded yesterday. Good morning, Honorable Julia Sachon. Well, good morning, everybody. And mm. Alvis, thank you so much on NTV for this mm. morning. Mm. And uh, so grateful to be here this morning. Okay. Um, Honorable, I know you've just returned to the country. You are in Japan, but uh, I know for a fact as well, that uh, you are no longer an elite runner. What were you doing in Japan? Well, uh, fortunately, mm. all the good news, mm. I was the only one in Africa mm. who was inducted uh, in the Hall of Fame to be the World Olympian for life, and I was invited mm. to go and receive my award mm. as a former Olympian and former gold medalist who retired and still work with the community. Mm. So that's why I was invited on 26th. Mm. Then I was given, we were all invited, the five of us in the entire world. Mm. I represented Africa mm. from Uganda. Mm. Then one of the ladies was from the United States representing North America. Mm. One of the gentlemen were representing uh, Europe. Mm. He came from Great Britain. Mm. Uh, then one of the ladies was from Australia, representing Australia as a continent. Okay. Then one of the men was from Japan, representing Asia continent. Mm. So we were five in total. So the World Olympians Association recognizes athletes or people who've had an impact on um, on the world from the various continents yes they do that every four years every so four years. ever seen a thing in africa mm. i became the first african to be recognized or inducted into mm. the world olympians mm. who cares about the community mm. what have you done uh, the, our viewer might want to know uh, what you've done that uh, eventually led to the recognition from the world olympians association well, from the time I retired in 2010, mm. I came back from the United States and then I began a project mm. called Achon Uganda Children Fund and La Mercy, which is uh, a Beulah Health Center 3 mm. in my mm. district, Otuke. Mm. And then I also distributed hose covering 17,000 households. Okay. And I give seeds, mm. soya beans, mm. and sim sim, each one 10 kilos. Mm. And I also drilled 46 new boreholes within the five years. Okay. And what I also did, I began the Achon Marathon run every year, mm. which I give T-shirts and we give scholarship mm. to the young athletes. Yeah, I remember taking part in uh, Mass in the 2014 edition. I did not run, but at least I covered, I covered the event. Yeah. And uh, I know uh, what you go through eventually to hold such an event. But shortly before we return to the Julius Achon Children's Fund, Uganda's performance at the Olympics, uh, four, four medals, two golds, a silver, and a bronze. What has changed? What do you think has changed? Well, first of all, I want to say that, mm. you know, the Uganda performance makes me smile. Mm. And if you see from the record since Uganda, I think they first participated in the first Olympics in 1956, yeah. which from that time we have been getting zero and mm. last place. Yeah, maybe we have the two medals from uh, the 1968, um, uh, two boxers, two uh, boxers. including Ureo Rabogo, mm. and Eidad Mukwanga, and then in 1972, when uh, Jonah Kibua won the gold, and then there was also another uh, silver in there. So since then, it's just been the one medal, 96, Davis Kamoga, then 1980, um, uh, John Mugabe the Beast, and then Stephen Kiprotich. Yes, and then came, uh, yes, and then, mm. uh, the th uh, then uh, this year, yeah. 
uh, Tokyo mm. having four medals, mm. two gold, one silver, one bronze. And actually all, all of them coming in athletics. All of them coming into athletics. Mm. I think what has changed in the country, first of all, one, mm. oh, this government also mm. has, has, has came into a big support to support the, uh, the, the sports. Mm. And also the technology has changed. Mm. You find shoes. Mm. Everywhere you can buy shoes. Mm. Uh, then there are people who cheer for athletes when they're running. Mm. Uh, then people got motivation. And also, uh, compared to our time, mm. first of all, wherever you want to buy shoes, you will not even find shoes, even a winner. Mm. Remember, training entire uh, my athletic career in Uganda will train without shoes, which they gave me a kagera, barefoot. Kagere. Kagere. Yeah. So, what I've seen now, you see the current athletes, they mm. got the physiotherapy massage, mm. they got the manager who can, who can put them into meets. Mm. You got good coaches who have experience or who have been doing some coaching courses. Mm. And also, the country also, they motivate athletes. Let's mm. say they like for Dockers in Sukuri, who was a Biole house. Mm. Or Nyango, the football soccer guy, he mm. was given a, a, a car. Mm. Oh, so many athletes get prizes, so it makes you feel like I want to be like a mm. chapter gay. Mm. I want to be like so and so. That's mm. why there's a huge improvement in these current sports. Mm. Okay, this week I also got to learn that uh, you captained the team at uh, must have been the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. What is the feeling you get when you um, when when you captain the team and when you go out uh, for that um, opening ceremony? Well, for my case, mm. to be the Uganda team captain, mm. having grown up from the northern Uganda where there was a war, mm. and being given that opportunity or mm. the chance to lead the entire country, mm. I think it was a, such a moment. I remember it was a 1996 Uganda team captain. Mm. And I had no experience at all what Olympic was, but mm. I will hear mm. when you run good in Olympics, mm. you earn more money or you become uh, popular. Mm. And also, the year 2000, when I competed in Sydney Olympics, mm. I think I was still a Uganda team captain. I was given that ownership, which it was such a great moment. Mm. And I, really, I feel so proud by that time. Mm. Although I didn't have a chance to make into Olympic glory or mm. to win a gold medal, I think majorly mm. on my side, the war was so much in the northern Uganda. Joseph Konya killing people like, each time I would hear my family being killed, mm. my uncle killed. Mm. In 2004, mm. I, was the, I was in a total good shape mm. to run the Greece Olympics. Mm. So when I qualified in May, mm. and then later on I had the report my mom was killed, and then I just gave up not to compete oh. at all. Okay, must have been, must have been very, very tough in there. But, um, I'm going forward and I'm um, looking at uh, how um, uh, the Ugandan is performed, or Uganda's performance. Uh, how do you rate, um, for example, Joshua Cheptege? Would you consider him uh, Uganda's greatest sportsman, for example? Oh, sure. Uh, mm. You know what uh, Joe, uh, uh, what Cheptege did. Mm. I think you can compare. You cannot compare with any sportsman or sportswoman in this country. Mm to win a gold. First of all, the world record was one of the major things. He broke world record in this uh, current situation. Yeah, in the 5,000 meters 5, and, and, and meter 10,000 meters. And 10, mm. So to break a world record, mm. removing those records from Kenya and Ethiopia, mm. you must have a different engine. Mm -hmm. And this brought uh, Chapter Gate to be a totally different person right now. Mm. And he could have won both gold medal in 10,000. You know what mm. God has a plan. You can't even complain. You have to be contented. Mm. But I remember giving him a flag after finishing 10,000. So I, mm. I told him, I said, you know, uh, 5,000 you're going to win because mm. you should have uh, run the last lap like mm. there's no tomorrow because he, he was better than all these athletes by one minute, mm. not a second, by one by minute. One so minute. he saved mm. that energy, which he could have used it. I think that's what he realized. That, that was in the 10,000 meters? That was in the 10,000 meter. Mm. And I think that's what he realized in the 5,000 meter. And mm. he did not leave anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing was left. He gave it all out until mm. he found himself. He became the, the champion and the mm. greatest athlete in this country mm. and in the entire world. Mm. Then um, what do you think, for example, a sport needs to do 
what do you need needs to change uh, to have um, uh, better, even better performances? Or oh, what do you think? Um, um, this, how how can these athletes be helped further? Uh, do you think, for example, the medals that Uganda got at uh, this year's Olympics was down to individual uh, brilliance, or there is um, you could say collective effort, something done? Um, um, organi organized by the Ghana Athletics Federation to have to ensure that we've got, you have the medals that we do? Well, first of all, one, mm. no sport is an individual merit. Mm. And nobody forces you. Mm. They can only advise you a little bit, mm. which uh, you have to sacrifice mm. or not to give up. Mm. And I think, first of all, they s the athletes themselves, they know when I run, I'm running for myself and I will achieve. I think, first of all, that was an improve. Mm. And also, secondly, I see the government or the president also has a come up by supporting or giving these athletes. I think they get the gold med medal winners. They're receiving stipend mm. every month or something like that. This is one of the things which is in pushing them. Mm. And then they have training equipment. Mm. And then they got the sponsors from mm. the foreign uh, company. I think one of the things which I would see, if we want to be number one mm. in Africa, mm. which we are almost close because we finished number 36 yeah. out of 206 countries yeah. in the entire continent. And so you know in Africa, in just Africa, behind, only behind Kenya. In, uh, behind Kenya, which mm. there's a chance for us to, to be number one now because I see mm. everyone now want to, 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 to run fast and to be on top of the world. I think what I would see, the grassroots, mm. people should focus on the grassroots and mm. all region mm. in the country. Mm. Because right now you're looking at, in athletics, we are only in the uh, Sebe region or eastern part. Mm. But you find different places, places like Kabale as mm. a long distance. In Lira, we where Jonah Kibua mm. and me myself came from. And Ogola Francis, by the way, the yeah. world junior champion in 1992 in mm. Seoul, Korea. Okay. 400 meter. Also and took part in the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. And also he took part in 1992 Barcelona, then in 1996 in, in Atlanta, Atlanta, USA. Mm. And then you find sprinter like Davis Camoga, where he come from. So all those major places where the retired or the former yeah, so athletes. Mm, yeah, so from. clearly there is a talent in every region. There is uh, a, a school of thought uh, where most people think um, uh, Athletes, people in the central region mm -hmm. cannot become good athletes. But we clearly, when you mention, you for example, see, Davis Kamoga. If you look at Nyon, who knew people from central would be? So there's a talent in every part of the country, the country. Mm. which we should see mm. where each and every athlete come from. There should be, you know, is a good indication mm. that they are good talent in that area. Mm. Okay. Um, then, um, Honorable. Uh, looking back again, do you think the government has done enough uh, for sports in, in this country? Uh, for example, you have the high altitude training center in Terriet, uh, that um, was fa the idea was mooted in uh, 2010 after Kipsiro. Moses Kipsiro won the Commonwealth double in the 10,000 and 5,000 meters. But 11 years on, all we have to show for the al uh, high altitude training center is just um, a block uh, where athletes can reside, as well as uh, a running track that is uh, the where they're just laying the tartan track. Do you think the government is doing enough uh, for sports in the country? You know, I want to let the nation know, mm. the country. Mm. You know, when this government came into power, mm. uh, then they were not aware about how good or important the sports. Mm. But now they have learned mm. and they have been getting all the information. I mm. think on myself, I really am contented that the government is doing something. Mm. For example, when I won the gold medal in 1994, mm. nobody knew <laughs> that I won, and I was I was never given an award or recognized by the country, mm. except until I moved to United States. And then the government of the United States again they honor me, mm. and the company Nike honor me, mm. and I want to say this: this government has mm. done a great, although they are yet to improve on certain areas. Th areas. Mm where like we talk about the Tariet Stadium mm. is coming up. It takes time because mm. we are in a third world country to mm. make things finish faster. Mm. But I think with uh, this wonderful performance, mm. it's going to help the government to build or complete that stadium. Mm. And then other parts of the country, which is 
they need the stadium to be built, I think they should focus. Mm. And also, what encouraged the athlete, I think the government are giving good allowance. Mm. In my time, I would train for four years, and then I get only 100 US dollar. Wow. But these people who went to Tokyo, mm. I think they're, they're, they're given allowance of 2,500 US dollar mm. compared to my time. Mm. So these are the thing motivating. Mm. Although athletes do not get payment for their own life, you only get that allowance for once in four years. <laughs> I think the government should come up like to make sure these uh, top athletes be mm. awarded every month with something. Okay. Yeah, then also, you, um, you I can easily describe you as uh, one of uh, very successful uh, former athletes. You talk about um, after your career, how you were employed by Nike and all. What advice would you give uh, to active athletes at the moment? Because eventually, after your athletics career, you took up um, several jobs or you did several things. And uh, currently, you could say you are living a, fair, a, a, a successful life. I think one, one or two advice I would give. One, mm. when, when you're on top of the world mm. and you're making money, mm. you should know at the end everything will come to the ground or down. I think education, mm. you should also have some education a little bit mm. uh, to support your wisdom or the knowledge mm. to keep your money. Because when, if you just run mm. and you don't know how to keep your money to do saving, Mm. I think at the end, you will find it very easy for you to be the, the street person mm. or be homeless. Mm. Uh, one of the things when, when I was competing, I was alternating. Mm. I would go to practice and then I go to class. Mm. And then maybe I would uh, skip when Olympics year is coming and then I skip that year. I don't go to class. Mm. But I really wanted to complete my education. Mm. I think what also in sports you need to be full time when now you're on top of the world like those of Nayon, mm. Cheptege, Kip mm. Lim, Chef Lim, those people teach. Mm. Sometimes you look at like you're being paid or you want big prime mon prize money. Mm. You don't want to go to school. Mm. But I think at the end when you finish your career, you mm. should go and get some, you know, certificates, mm. which would be good. I think one of the things which has made me I became very successful, and then I myself, I was signed to be paid for life, which uh, made me I feel I'm among the, I think, the blessed or the luckiest athletes in, in the world or in Africa. Mm. And these athletes who are performing good, I think would be very difficult for them to be paid all their life, but the money they're making, they should use it very wisely. Mm. But I'm thankful, grateful for Chapter Gay. Mm. He has uh, done a uh, community work building uh, a running track or the stadium. Mm. That's a one of the examples you must give back to the community. Mm. Okay. Um, personally, whenever someone mentions your name, f uh, you forever, I will forever link you uh, to, to the sporting world for what you did um, as an athlete. Uh, but somehow, there are people that know you as a politician. Mm. When did you get the thought of, of, turning um, uh, of changing from sport and then eventually venturing into, in, into politics? See, uh, what motivated me when Nike, the running shoe company, mm. they said they will continue to pay me, mm. is my choice. Either I want to live in the United States or return back to Uganda. Mm. And then I just feel I said this money is useless in the United States. I should go back to Uganda. And when I returned back to Uganda, I wanted to build a, a medical health center or the hospital mm. in my village. Because when I left in 1990, there was no hospital. In Utuke, we had only one where you find those days they would uh, cook the, the needle or the syringes whenever they want to inject the patients. Oh. So I had that vision when I become successful, I wanted to build a health center and until I made it. So when I returned back in uh, 2011, I built a hospital in my village. Mm. And then later on, the community, they came with a proposal, all the top leaders, about 500, they said, you know, you're doing great things. Mm. We want to send you to parliament because at least you come for people. Mm. All our politicians who are there, they never come for us or they don't lobby things. Mm. I think this when I look at like, I've retired from sports mm. and I'm not doing anything much. And I just went like, then I registered mm. into 
of politics and I found myself already being elected and voted a member of parliament for Tuke. Mm. And just encouraged me. And again, the loving, the loving system increased mm. since I was a politician. Mm. And there are things when uh, I buy like an ambulance, I bought two ambulances, so I have the tax waived off by the, by the government. So these are the things which I feel like I should do the best I can to serve the community mm. as a politician. And it's another label. Mm. And I think it's a great legacy to mm. keep doing such where you leave another door mm. to move to another door. Okay. Uh, we've, got, we've got some feedback, and uh, someone is wondering, you mentioned earlier, you mentioned uh, John Akibwa having come from Lira, and you yourself uh, also being close to Lira. How come the region has not produced uh, more athletes? I think mostly when the war broke up in uh, northern Uganda mm. with Joseph Kony mm. uh, from the uh, 90s, I think the all northern Uganda was a wipe out. People have been living in a refugees camp for 21 years until mm. 2007. Mm. And so all these top sportsmen and women, they all ran in the central. If you look at in football, mm. those of Ochaya, mm. they're in the football. And then the few athletes who are running uh, around here, mm. they moved from northern. So northern is still mm. recovering mm. again to to make sure the sports come up. This is the one of the awareness when I returned from United States year 2011. Mm. I began putting this cross country run in my district, which I believe there's a lot of talents. Mm. Like for example, in a Choli, mm. field, uh, field events, javelin, long jump and sprinter, mostly you can find uh, then in Lango region, you find middle distance, 400 meter, 800 meter, and even 1000 meter because Mm. I came, it's a flat land, but there's a talent. So okay. this is one thing which uh, we are appealing to the government. We should go back to the grassroots like mm. back in the days. Mm. Because now the system or the technology has changed where it's very easy to identify mm. the best athletes. Mm. Okay, um, maybe your final remarks as we wrap it up. Um, uh, um, uh, well, uh, someone was also asking about uh, what, you, what you make of uh, women's sport in the, in, the, in the country? I'm grateful. Uh, she Crane mm. became, they're very popular in the country. Mm. I think the good thing women are becoming, mm. they, 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 they have now come into the system. Because mm. I remember in the northern Uganda where I left, a girl would not kick a soccer ball. They would laugh at a girl. Mm. But you see now it has become equality mm. or general sports for everybody where they see when you win. Mm. Or when you play, you become successful, you get mm. a free education, you mm. get good funding. Mm. I think these are one of the things majorly want to encourage mm. ladies or the young girls because look at in uh, Kenya or in Ethiopia, mm. sports now is run by women. Mm. Or not only that, of, of this uh, current Olympics, mm. is won the gold medal steeple chase Uganda women. Peru, Chemotai mm. won a gold medal. This is such a good example. Look mm. at Dockers in school. Mm who won the 2007 World Steeple Chess Championship. Mm. So I, you can see that we are coming one by one. Mm. Although it might take time, I think, mm. this is when the government should uh, come up and uh, send all these messages to schools and mm. institutions. Mm. Okay, um, thank you for your time, Honorable Julius Achon, mm. the Otuke County MP. But uh, in the sports world, we know him as uh, the 1994 World Junior Champion, also got the bronze in the All-Africa Games. A couple of years later, he's joined me this morning for the sports update.